Hi there and welcome back to my channel where I dive deep into cryptocurrency trading strategies and their results. This time I'm exploring a fascinating frag trade strategy developed by a user known as Tyrell. Well, this strategy named SMA IP3 version 2 is a prime example on how to leverage technical indicators to make informed trading decisions in the crypto market. I'll walk you through the code block by block, explaining each part so you can understand how it works and possibly implement it or adapt it yourself. So grab your coffee and let's go into the nuts and bolts of this trading strategy. If you search on GitHub, there are some code repositories that contain this code. I will open the first one you see here and walk you through the code line by line. The strategy begins by importing the essential Python libraries and modules. And these imports include daytime for handling date and time objects, the alib for technical analysis functions, pandas for data manipulation, and various components from Fractrate to define and manage the strategy's parameters and trading logic. This following class block defines the strategy class SMA IP3 version 2, inheriting from Fractrade's IS strategy. It sets up the initial parameters like the buy and sell conditions, stop loss and return on investment. And the strategy uses a mix of simple moving averages and exponential moving averages as the core technical indicators to generate buy and sell signals. These lines here define the parameters that can be optimized by using tools like Hyperopt, a component within the Fractrade trading bot for optimizing strategies parameters. And parameters such as the base NB candles buy, which defines the number of candles to consider for buying, and buy trigger here, which specifies whether to use SMA or EMA for the buying indicator, are set up to be adjustable. This strategy has been configured to use the trading stop loss, and since it gives a positive bias to the backtest, which can make the strategy's results more favorable than that they actually are, I'm not quite a fan of this feature when backtesting. That's why I also created a file where the TSL has been disabled and tested that version also. And I will show you the differences between these results a little bit later in the video. Now as for the time frame, it has been designed to work best on the 5 minute time frame and we'll discover later if that is actually the best time frame to let this strategy work on. The confirm trade exit method in this strategy determines if a trade could be closed based on the recent price action and momentum. It checks if the most recent candles opening price and RSI are both higher than the previous candles, indicating a continued upward momentum. If these conditions are met during a sell due to ROI achievement, a sell signal or a trading stop loss, the method will prevent the trade from closing, suggesting the potential for further gains. In the populate indicators method of this strategy, there are several key technical indicators that are calculated. The method calculates two EMAs with a period of 50 and 200, which are used to analyze longer term price trends. The EMA 50 checks midterm trends, while the EMA 200 gives insight to more extended trends. An RSI with a very short period of 2 is used to gauge the momentum and possible overbought and oversold conditions. And depending on the strategy's run mode and parameters, it calculates buy and sell offsets from moving averages defined by the buy trigger and sell trigger values. These offsets are adjusted by low offset and high offset respectively, helping to fine tune the entry and exit points based on price movements relative to these averages. And the bad pair indicator here flags a pair as potentially bad for trading if the price has dropped significantly over the 12 or 6 candles compared to its closing price. Based on thresholds set by pair is bad 1 and pair is bad 2. This helps to avoid trading in pairs that show unfavorable price drops, which might indicate a lack of buyer interest or a strong downtrend. As for the buy conditions, if the short-term moving average is above the long-term moving average, it is suggesting an upward trend. And when the close price is above the long-term average, the uptrend is confirmed. Also, this only works if the pair is not flagged as bad, indicating it's favorable for trading. 
If the close price is below the buy offset moving average, it suggests a good entry point in an uptrend. And finally, there should be a positive trading volume. This confirms there is enough market activity to support the entry. And to round this buy section off, the setup aims to buy during uptrends, but only after a slight retracement, potentially allowing for buyers to buy at a lower price in a rising market. And now as for the sell condition, when the closing price is above the sell offset moving average, it suggests that the price has reached a sufficient height above the expected trend to lock in profits. And there should also be positive trading volume, ensuring that the market activity can support the exit. So this strategy aims to secure profits by selling when the price is perceived to be peaking above the normal range, thus taking advantage of a heightened market condition. So together, these buy and sell strategies seem to form a coherent approach to trading that aims to enter the market during promising conditions and exit when sufficient profit margin is achieved or when the market shows a sign of a downturn. Now, next to the bias that is added when the trading stop loss feature is used, there can also be look-ahead bias included. And this could be the result of bad coding. Now, luckily, there is also a function in the backtesting engine that can spot most of the look-ahead biases. And I also have run this to detect any look-ahead bias, but as far as the function can spot, there was no bias detected. Which makes me more comfortable showing you the results I got from testing this strategy. Now in this section I will present you the results of the backtests I did with the trading stop loss enabled and with this TSL disabled to show you the differences in results. But I will discuss the no TSL results more since I add more value to these results as I told you earlier. Now with the TSL enabled the results of this strategy come at a very admirable end balance of more than $18,000. That's a profit percentage of over 17,000 on the 15 minute time frame with a win percentage of 76% and 85% of the 50 pairs favor this algorithm. But without the TSL enabled, we get a whole different picture here. Suddenly the 5 minute time frame has the best score, although the results of the 15 minute time frame follow close. Note however that the end balance and profit percentage on both time frames are much lower here. There is another interesting and important thing going on here as well, because the drawdown seems to be much lower, and the Gelmar, Shortino and Sharp ratio favor the no TSL strategy more than with it enabled. So there are lower gains, but the risk profile seems to be much better. A very interesting observation here I think. The second thing that is very noticeable here is the equity curve of both these versions. The TSL version equity curve rises very fast and after the bull market top it flattens out, but still has a jacket profile. But the gains are also more spread out over the complete chart. However, the no TSL version has a steeper inclination in the beginning as a result of more profitable weeks during the start of the last bull run, but then it flattens out even more. And what I also find remarkable is that there are no high drawdowns as far as I can see. And talking about drawdown, without the TSL enabled, you can see on the plot that the highest drawdown occurred at the start and at the end of the plotted time period. On average there is only a 0.6% drawdown over this period and that is very good in my opinion. Maybe a little bit too good to be honest, because in my experience a drawdown of around 10% or so is also good. And also a little bit more realistic, but maybe I'm too overcritical here. And now something about this new chart. The left plot shows a box plot of the win rate distribution, which is uh, quite encouraging I think. The median win rate is about 75%, which indicates a relative high probability of uh, individual trades being successful. Most win rates cluster around the median, with few outliers suggesting the strategy consistently achieves a win rate between 60 to 80%. The right plot represents the weekly profit distribution. This box plot reveals a median profit near zero, with most data points showing modest gains. However, the spread of profits, especially the outliers marked in red, indicate significant positive spikes, with some profits reaching as high as 600 USDT in certain weeks. What can we say watching those box plots? 
Now, despite a generally stable win rate, the profit distribution suggests high volatility in earnings. The wide range of profit outcomes, particularly the outliers, could imply that while the strategy often makes small gains, it occasionally captures large profitable moves, possibly during periods of high market volatility. The presence of these outliers with high profits is positive, but it's essential to consider the potential risk as well. Strategies with high profit variability might also carry higher risk, and these should be evaluated against the trader's risk tolerance and portfolio goals. And when compared to other strategies, this one appears to be a top contender, often ranking in the top tier across most indicators. And this indicates that despite some risk, this strategy manages to deliver competitive returns, maintaining a good balance between risk management and profitability. So overall, this SMA IP3 version 2 without the TSL enabled shows a strong performance profile, making this a potentially attractive option for traders looking for robust returns with managed risk levels. And at the moment, this strategy has a very admirable place in the overall strategy league with its good results and decent risk management capabilities. The trailing stop loss version managed to get a place in the top 10 of best performance algorithms and the no TSL version also scores pretty well here too. Now you have to understand that the version without the trailing stop loss enabled was tested way later after I also tested out many other strategies performances. These other strategies I have to work out into other videos and blog posts so consider this uh, chart as a teaser for things yet to come. Now I think that this trading algorithm certainly has a good potential for markets. But still remember that you only should use this in actual live trading after you have done your own research. It fits your risk appetite and do extensive back and forward testing on your own trading setup. And now after these conclusions I want to thank you for watching this video. And if you like these kinds of tests and analysis, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to click the bell icon. If you want to support me, then please be a patron. Uh, and there you get also the additional benefits of getting all the backtest output, code, plots and more to run this on your own setup. This is it for now and uh, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye!